Hello, today I have three different Anchor power banks all in one video. Why three? Well, these are the three I had waiting for videos. Nah. More so than that, these are some of the most popular options from Amazon's most purchased power bank list for mobile devices, and there have been some reports about compatibility on versions of these. So I decided to see what all the fuss is about and see if any of these power banks are any good. I will be going through each of the power banks to see what it can do for power output, how much energy it can store, and how fast they can charge. It should be an interesting one, so join me as I get in depth on these power banks. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, three power banks will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities to help you make an informed buying decision. As I slowly build up the list of power banks tested, hopefully we will find some better ones. So that is why this video is here, to find out if these are that better power bank. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon, the super button, and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. First up is this Anchor 313 power bank, PowerCore Slim 10K, 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. These still come in the old style Anchor packaging, simple and light. A little plastic wrapping and we're in. Power bank time. The power bank is very basic and that is a 5 volt only device with a USB micro B and USB C charging port and a USB A output port. The input can do 10 watts and the output can do 12 watts. You do get a micro USB to USB A cable with the power bank. Not a lot of power, but then again, this is a smaller battery. All of these power banks have a four LED display for the remaining charge and a button to turn it on. The user manual for this is very basic. It gives you some very simplified specifications, not really enough to get an idea of how many charges you can get out of this thing. It turns out that this is the best selling power bank on Amazon for mobile devices. It has tons of reviews and I don't doubt that it works just fine. It is also really inexpensive, so there must be nothing hiding behind that inexpensive and well-revered exterior, right? Oh yeah, there's plenty hiding in here, and it isn't good. So first of all is charge speed. This thing charges incredibly slowly. If you wanted to use this to provide a quick charge or top off the power bank fast and go, forget it. This is an overnight charge kind of device. The output power is a little better, but it still isn't the kind of thing that will fast charge your phone. So again, here we're talking about a slower overnight charge into your phone. This is fine if you want to carry it around all the time. It'll easily double your phone's battery, so no fault in that. It's just not much smaller than the 20K milliamp hour counterparts I'm looking at next. But before that, it's time to look at how this power bank performs. This power bank uses a lot of energy to charge, then doesn't have much energy on the delivery side compared with its rating. This means it's a really poor performer. The power bank wastes almost half of the energy you put in. It doesn't get hot because it does so slowly, but almost half is just sad. It's really like they didn't try on this one. It has to be a linear regulator on charging or something. It is so inefficient. Hopefully this doesn't carry over to the other power banks. The 525 power bank or the PowerCore Essential 20K PD power bank is next. Open the box and dump everything out. Pull the plastic cover off and we're in. This power bank is a little more advanced in that it has both the power delivery or PD in the model name and a quick charge capabilities on the two ports. It can deliver 5 and 9 volts on the USB-C port as well as charge from those voltages. It can also deliver 5, 9, or 12 volts from the USB-A port in the quick charge mode with up to 20 watts of output power. This power bank drops the micro B USB port. The input can do 18 watts on the charging side, so the fastest of the bunch, but it is still fairly slow. You get a USB-A and a USB-C to C cable with this power bank. You don't get much more power, but you do get twice the rated capacity of the 313. The user manual, again, is very basic. It gives you some very simplified specifications, but again, not an idea of how many charges you're going to get out of it. This power bank is also high up in the best-selling list of power banks for mobile devices on Amazon. It is also a little more expensive with those extra electronics. I feel like this one has more carefully described its specifications than the others as well. The slower charge speed of this device means it still isn't great to use this to provide a quick charge or top off the power bank fast and then go. Forget it. This is an overnight charge kind of device. The energy required to charge this device was within reason for a 20k mAh power bank, though, and the energy out was also in line with typical power bank offerings. The PD charging means it can top off your phone a little bit faster, so 18 to 20 watts getting into your phone is a little more reasonable. The capacity of this device will easily quadruple your phone's battery, so no fault in that. 
This power bank used a much more modest amount of energy to charge. This means the electricity you pay for is being put to better use with this power bank versus the 313. This is still on the lower side of the scale, but it isn't the worst. The power bank wastes about 35% of the energy you put in. It still doesn't get hot because it also does it slowly, but that percentage is still on the higher side for losses. Still much better than the 10K slim version. Next is the 325 Power Bank Power Core Essential 20K 20,000 mAh. Again, the old style anchored packaging, blue and white. Pull all the plastic cover and we're in. This power bank is also very basic in that it is a 5 volt only device with a USB micro B and USB C charging port, and this time two USB A output ports. The input can do 15 watts, but is only rated for 10 watts, so bonus, it charged a lot faster than they claimed, still really, really slow, and the output can do 12 watts on one port or 15 watts on both ports. You get a USB micro to USB A cable with the power bank. You don't get much more power, but you do get twice the rated battery capacity versus the 313. The user manual continues the trend of being not very useful. The power bank is also very high up in the Amazon best-selling list of Amazon mobile devices. It has a ton of reviews, and I don't doubt that it works just fine. It is more expensive with that extra capacity and extra ports. Does that mean it's better? I think this one is still hiding some secrets inside. Yep, charge speed. This thing charges incredibly slowly. Better than rated, but slow. If you wanted to use this device to provide a quick charge or top off the power bank fast and go, again, forget it. This is an overnight charge kind of device also. The energy required to charge this device was surprisingly high at 105 watt hours. This is way more than expected for the battery capacity. The output power, about the same as the 313 or 10K unit. This will be a slower power into your device kind of charge. So again, here we're talking about a slower overnight charge into your phone. This is fine if you want to carry the device around all the time. It'll easily quadruple your phone's battery, so no fault in that, although the charge energy means it'll cost you more to charge it. At 20K mAh, it does have a surprising power output circuit delivering nearly all of the rated battery capacity into the output. I expect this is because the battery is a little over the rated capacity and that balances things a bit funny with the testing, but still, it has a lot of storage for its size. The power bank uses a lot of energy to charge. The only good side is that once that energy is stored inside, you can get it out with high efficiency. But the charging efficiency is very low. This means it's also a really poor performer. This power bank wastes about 40% of the energy you put in. It doesn't get hot because it does it slowly, but that percentage is still on the higher side for losses. Still better than the 10K slim version. Okay, time to weigh some power banks. Overall, the power banks were not bad on weights. At about 350 grams for the 20,000 milliamp hour packs and 230 grams for the 10,000 milliamp hour pack, this is good. The supplied cables were all around 20 grams and the packaging was fairly lightweight and mostly a paper box. Each power bank was about the same size width and height wise at about 72 by 150 to 160 centimeters. The bigger difference was in the thickness. The 10K 3-win-3 model was 1.6 centimeters thick while the 3 325 and 525 were two centimeters thick. The voltages all stayed within the tolerance of the USB power delivery specification, which is nice to see. One of the reasons for picking up these power banks was a Patreon post about incompatibility with the Satoshi PD chargers. I tried all of these on the PD and also on a mixed USB AC mixed charger power adapter thing and all the devices on one charger or one device and I didn't find any issues with charging from PD or non PD chargers with any of these power banks. The compatibility was surprisingly good. Next, I checked if these devices have an always on output voltage. To test if they turn off after a short period of time, I used a light load, which is this very low wattage LED light, and confirmed that all of the LEDs went out at various times. It took about two minutes for one power bank and one minute for the other. One power bank wouldn't even turn on with the light load. I had to plug in the PD trigger to get it to activate. Then the LED was on, but then after one minute, it turned off. Overall, this means these won't supply power all the time. These power banks were well within the 100 watt hour requirement for non-extra permitted air travel of power banks. These are easy carry on devices with their slim design and lighter weight. Not the biggest possible capacity, but easy to put in a bag. These power banks can run for a fairly long time. The low wattage output means they won't charge your devices rapidly, but they can keep the power flowing for a longer period of time. This wouldn't be bad to keep your phone playing videos on a long flight, for example. 
The 20K MAH especially is not a bad choice in this regard. The thermals on these power banks were all barely noticeably above ambient. I didn't take any images because there was nothing to say besides they stay nice and cool. On to the overload testing. As with any power adapter, we can push this power bank to its limit to see how many watts it can deliver. The expectation is for the device to safely shut down in the case of a situation like a short circuit or broken cable. These power banks all shut down within the safe limits of the ratings. In terms of value, these represent excellent value. The dollars per watt hour are category leading. The Avatronic power bank represents good value as well, but there is a more complicated device with faster charging and discharging. These anchor devices are inexpensive and don't have a lot of features representing the value side of things. I guess it makes sense that some of these are the best selling devices. Even though these are not efficient devices, the dollars up front are all a lot of people will see. There must be a reason those other power banks are so expensive. So introducing a new chart. This time I'm looking at the energy and power densities of these power banks. The energy density is shown two ways, both the weight and the physical size in liters. The higher the energy density, the better. The power density tells you how fast you can access that energy. This is where we see those more expensive power banks start to stand out. You can charge them fast and you can discharge them fast and apparently that costs money. Just a side note, these higher density power banks also tend to be more efficient than any of the slower charging power banks. Okay, overall, this is a mixed bag. The most popular power bank is easily the worst one. In terms of specifications and performance, it is quite bad. Wastes a ton of energy, and it just isn't that great. But what it is, is cheap. It is also simple and therefore probably quite reliable. No pushing the envelope here. It is lightweight and the build quality seems high on the outside. The 20,000 milliamp hour variants are different. I feel like I got a golden sample overachiever and one pretty typical performer. In terms of the 20K MAH power banks, I am kind of torn between which one of those is better. I think the answer is Avatronic. You get faster charging, faster discharging, it stays cool, it's lightweight, and it's reasonably priced. Oh yeah, I didn't pick any of these. The one anchor unit has incredibly efficient output circuitry though, making almost full use of its 72 watt hour rated capacity. But one thing it didn't have was efficient charging, so it basically wastes most of the energy on the charge cycle up front, so you never actually win with that unit either. The PD-1 was actually okay. It is still painfully slow charging, but it does the job. This will be able to support a few more devices and charge your phone a little faster, meaning you can be tethered a bit less. Overall, I am torn between good value and energy density and fairly bad overall performance. The value seems so good and yet the efficiency of the charge cycle seems lazy. The power density is very low, so these won't be powering any laptops or higher power consuming devices, which does limit their usefulness. I expect a bit more from the PD model, but I guess it just didn't meet my expectations. The trade-off has to be reliability. Let me know if you have one of these and how it has been performing for you. The simpler design I expect means that these will last longer than something on the bleeding edge of technology. Okay, these are all tested and not yet on any database. I need to get on that still. The stickers at least remind me that I already tested these ones. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to get back into some power adapters. I have more 100 watt adapters to check out and the quest for the 100 watt adapter is still not ended. There are still so many more. So check out the All Things website linked in the description for upcoming videos. And as always, I will see you in the comments section. Thanks again and goodbye.